In the web of cinematic history, some moments are destined to be forgotten. But hidden within the depths of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 lie untold tales, lost scenes that never made it to the silver screen. Join us as we swing through the cutting room floor, uncovering the secrets the what-ifs and the could-have-beens of Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3's Lost Character, Dr. Wallace Generally speaking in addition to Venom Sandman was one of the main victims in the editing room of Spider-Man 3, numerous shots and scenes were removed including a good portion of his backstory and motivations, this brings us to Dr. Phil Wallace. As we could see in the movie released in theaters, Flint Marco is constantly looking for money to be able to treat his daughter's illness. After the accident that turns him into Sandman he would have gone to visit a scientist named Phil Wallace, who apparently was collaborating with Sandman to create a cure for his daughter. The material presented here in the video can be found both in leaked trailers of the film back in 2006 and on the channel that I will leave in the description, unfortunately we do not have the audio of the scene, therefore it is left to the imagination. What dialogue are these two characters having, but based on the context of the film it can be related to both the search for a treatment to help Marco's daughter or Marco's transformation into Sandman. Spider-Man 3's Lost Horror Elements, Spider-Man Consumed by Evil Another deleted scene that has been named and cited multiple times when talking about the deleted scenes from Spider-Man 3 is the mirror scene. The scene in question takes place after a vengeful Peter Parker has returned from what he believed was the murder of Sandman. Peter locks himself in his apartment and decides to contemplate in the mirror how much he has changed. In the theatrical cut it is suggested that Peter realizes that he has crossed a line that he had not crossed before, all due to the influence of the black suit. However in the deleted scene in question we can see how for a brief moment the mirror shows a symbiotic creature. At first one could interpret that it is Venom, however a closer analysis of the character reveals that it is a Peter totally consumed by the black suit and evil. This scene has been seen in multiple trailers, however what is not well known is that there are two versions of this scene, one that shows us a venomized Peter and another that shows us another creature close to the original animatronic that was going to be used to give life to Venom. As this promotional image shows, this scene was supposed to be a lot longer, and Peter would struggle to get the black suit off. As a curious fact, the idea of a Peter completely consumed by the symbiote has already been used in comics, such as the comic What If, the other, where the design of the venomized Peter is very similar to that of this one deleted scene, I recommend taking a look at this comic. Spider-Man 3's Lost Character Arc, Eddie Brock it's no mystery to anyone that the reception we got to Eddie Brock in Spider-Man 3 was pretty mixed. Mainly because of the little development we had of the character. This however was not originally the case, it is known that there were multiple deleted scenes that would have helped us as an audience feel even more the presence of this character and the justification of him as a villain. Among these deleted scenes we can highlight one where after being fired from the Daily Bugle Eddie goes to Gwen Stacy's house to try to rebuild his relationship with her. However Gwen wants nothing to do with him, especially after the scandal of the fake photos of Spider-Man. Other notable scenes are an extended version of Eddie in the church, prior to his transformation into Venom. Although the corresponding scene and audio have not yet been obtained, we know of the existence of a longer monologue, a monologue that would probably have helped understand Eddie's philosophy and thoughts even more than in the theatrical cut. Spider-Man 3's Lost Alternate Ending, Brock's Original Death one final lost story from this film shows us that the ending we got was not the one we should have seen. Sam Raimi who had already started his career working on horror films such as the Evil Dead saga wanted to make the most of the evil and terrifying potential of the symbiote. The general idea was to see the same series of events that we saw in the theatrical cut, Eddie tries to impale Peter but ends up killing Harry Osborn, an angry Peter manages to free himself from Venom's web and he jumps to meet him, Peter sees a gun with the one to fight Venom. This is where things change, originally Peter hits Venom and knocks him to another place in order to defeat him with the effects of the noise, in this original version Peter would have impaled Venom, this would obviously have resulted in Eddie's death, however the strongest revelation would have been that the alien had already killed and completely consumed Eddie, revealing a skeleton in its abandonment. Once the alien was freed he would have tried to unite once again with the shocked Peter Parker. Peter would try with all his might to free himself from the symbiote's clutches. Peter would see a structure with bars and throw them to generate noise, enough noise to kill the creature. There are many rumors surrounding this alternative ending, some say that it was shown in test screenings but that the audience categorically rejected it due to the harshness of the events, others say that it was never filmed and that it was only contemplated in an early version of the script. 
Be that as it may, the only things we have is the information from the official novelization, which corroborates this ending, a small fragment of the scene that can be seen in the leaked trailer from 2006 and stock footage that has been leaked throughout the years. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the unseen corners of Spider-Man 3, maybe we will see them one day, or maybe not, who knows.